Okay, so another important process that combines fluid flow and diffusion is matrix diffusion. And this occurs where you have uh, transport through high permeability channel ways in porous media that are flanked by lower permeability channel ways. So a fracture uh, in uh, a clay is really a, a classic example. Uh, but this also might be a sand bed, uh, sandwich between clay beds um, and, or other similar kinds of scenarios. And this is an example of that. This is a, a vein that is uh, that has uh, copper minerals in it that have weathered out to make these very nice colors. And the vein is right here. Um, and so what has happened is fluid has flowed along this vein. And uh, the vein is, is fairly narrow. It's, it's probably like this. And then uh, we've got advection uh, down this, uh, this fracture. And then there's diffusion out of the fracture into this matrix. And you can see that copper minerals were involved uh, in the diffusion process because they're now out in the matrix. And we have a similar thing here with these fractures, somewhat different orientation and different mineralogy. Um, but these are, these are much narrower than this one. Uh, but we also have uh, diffusion into the matrix that causes this uh, discoloration. Okay, so here's this matrix diffusion process. There's a fracture or high permeability channel way right here, and flow occurs along that path. That makes a high concentration in the fracture that causes a concentration gradient between the fracture and the matrix. So that concentration gradient drives diffusion from the fracture out into the matrix like this. And as a result of that, some of the mass that is moving along the fracture, instead of moving along, it moves out into the matrix. And so uh, the, the molecules that are in the matrix uh, are no longer in the fracture. And uh, so the, that causes the, the, the leading edge or the that the average um, movement of the uh, of the contaminant to be uh, delayed. So one of the things that matrix diffusion does is it retards or slows down the movement of contaminants, where you have contaminants moving along fracture into uncontaminated regions. So here it says that it slows the initial migration. Okay, so that's one effect, but what's happening here is that the, the matrix we're assuming is very low permeability. So uh, essentially we can uh, have diffusion out in here, but there's no, f no actual advection within this matrix. So the contaminants are sitting there, uh, but they're, they're not able to move by advection by, by this flow process. So eventually we, um, we have contaminants here in the fracture. Uh, and we've got this envelope of compounds that have diffused into the matrix, uh, like so. And uh, this looks a lot like that, that copper vein that we saw earlier. And so one of the implications here and one of the important aspects of this happens with remediation, where you have a scenario that looks like this, but uh, then you try to clean it up and uh, you say put in some wells and start pumping water out of the wells and you uh, pump clean water into this place and uh, you would you would fairly quickly be able to flush the contaminated water out of the fractures like this um, but now what happens is you have a scenario where the concentration in the matrix here is higher than the concentration in the fracture and so that causes diffusion from the matrix back into the fracture and what happens here is that the diffusion process back into the fracture is quite slow. The gradients and concentrations are fairly flat. Uh, and so uh, this is occurring, but it's, it's pretty slow. And so you have kind of a good news, bad news with this, is that the, um, the rate is slow, but it's fast enough that it uh, can contaminate the water to concentrations that are high enough so uh, it's a problem. So that's, that's the bad news. Um, and the, the good news is, I guess, that it, it's able to remove the contaminants. 
um, and, uh, and and get them out of there. But the bad news is that it's so slow that it's not really uh, a practical uh, practical technique for removing contaminants. Um, and so the result is that this can cause contaminants to to bleed back into the fractures and contaminate what would otherwise be uncontaminated water um, for a long period of time. And so we've got yeah, clean water coming in, contaminated water coming out, and uh, this causes a, this takes a, a this occurs for a very long time, and it causes a very slow process of recovery uh, of contaminants using this approach. So we can see how this is occurring if we put a little marker right here and uh, look at the um, concentration. This is now concentration as a function of time. And if we have no matrix diffusion, then we have a pulse that comes down here and the pulse of concentration increases and then uh, decreases like that. Now, if we have matrix diffusion, what happens is the, the pulse comes down here and, and some of the mass is uh, put into the uh, matrix and so the concentration, uh, the rise of the concentration is much less than it would be without uh, matrix diffusion. Uh, so this is what's happening right here, a result of, of, what, of the process that's shown here. Um, and then it reaches a peak but then uh, what happens is that the, the bleed out of the compound back into the fracture takes a long time. So the concentration uh, decrease uh, takes a very long time and we have this long tail on the, the plot of concentration as a function of time. Okay, so that's the, the essence of the matrix diffusion problem. This problem is really one of the, the main reasons why there are many contaminated sites out there still that are difficult to clean up. Um, so this is a very important problem in the, uh, the overall environmental area, the, the, the um, groundwater cleanup area in particular. And so uh, one of the things that we'll do for homework is analyze a problem that is uh, kind of a simplified version, an idealized version of this matrix diffusion uh, process.